Hey Floss Tube, welcome back everybody. I'm Stacy, the 911 Stitcher, and I'm here today with Callie. Can you say hi? Callie? Oh, she's gonna crawl into my lap instead. Anyway, thanks for coming back guys, and welcome to all the new viewers. If you're just joining us, or me and Callie today, <laughs> if you're just joining me, this video is about cross stitch. And like I say every week, a little bit about punch needle, maybe crochet. Next week, I think I might show my crocheted uh, baby blanket that's almost done. It was a whip that I had put back in my closet, like maybe, oh gosh, a couple years back and I just never finished it. And it was almost done. I had maybe five rows to go and um, I got it back out. So I plan on working on that and finishing it and showing you guys maybe next week. So anyway, this is floss tube number 12 and today is Saturday, November 9th. And again, thanks everybody for joining me. So I've got so much to tell you guys and let's get started. So I wanna thank all of you for your comments. You guys, oh, all your well wishes on my upcoming surgery, um, which probably won't be. I had a lot of people ask when that will be. It will probably be sometime next year. I actually got a call yesterday from my doctor. Um, he was not real happy with the CAT scan. So the way that the bones in my leg, in the knee, you've got the upper bone and the lower bone, and I've got screws that go into both bones, and those screws have created tunnels. Well, those tunnels, there's problems with them. So instead of one surgery, now it looks he, now he said it's going to be two surgeries. So long story short, because I know you don't want to hear about my medical problems, <laughs> but now it looks like there's going to be two. What he'll do is he'll, these screws have been in my leg for a long time, and what he'll do is he'll take those screws out. I have to have a bone graft. It, it's pretty risky taking these screws out because they've been in for a long time. They're large screws and the chances of the bones breaking is, is high. So what he's going to do is um, take those screws out and I have to have a bone graft on both bones. So um, anyway, uh, once those once the bones have healed, then I have to go back in for a second surgery um, to have a full ACL reconstruction done all over again, which it doesn't make me too happy. It's a year recovery, six months physical therapy. And so that's what I'm looking at. Um, so this first surgery where he's gonna um, do the bone grafts and takes the take the screws out will probably be sometime in the beginning of the year. He mentioned that he's taking time off um, November and December because he has a new baby coming. So that pushes me back a little bit, which is perfectly fine with me because I've got a lot coming up, which I'll tell you guys about. So anyway, people asked and so probably sometime in the beginning of next year, maybe as late as April it might be. So um, this week, let's see, what's what have I done this week? I got a lot of floss tube watched, uh, watched, watching in, <laughs> floss tube watching in. And I also um, got a lot of stitching done. I got a finish, which I'll show you. And um, I got some, I don't watch a lot of regular TV. I am addicted right now to two shows. One of them is, I don't know if anybody out there watches Million Little Things, but if you do, I'd love for you to leave a comment and tell me what you think about the characters and what you think about the show. Now, some people, when they watch season one, the first, say, three episodes were real depressing. It starts with a suicide where someone jumps off a building, and one of the main characters, and the show um, goes on about recovering from that it's not graphic it's just that's how it starts so everybody I know comments people had said on the show the tv shows facebook group they were saying that it's oh the show's so depressing oh it's this oh it's that but if you stick with it it is really good and the season finale of season one was something that I didn't see coming it really shocked me as to what was wrong with him and what was troubling him and it was so, it, it was written so well that it just blew me away. So now I'm on season two and I'm addicted to million little things. So the other show I've been watching, which to me is a little ridiculous because the whole show itself is just, uh, <laughs> anyway, Dog the Bounty Hunter. So if any of you guys, I was a fan of Beth and as everybody knows, she passed away from cancer this year and 
So now they're doing the final episodes of when Beth gets, uh, finds out that she is terminal and, um, sh now she decides to go out on a few bounty hunts with them. So she, and it goes back and forth from her, you know, how she's feeling, what she's, what's going on with her life. And then it goes to the, them catching the bad guys. So anyway, um, if anybody watches Dog the Bounty Hunter, let me know in comments what you guys think. And <laughs> like I said, I don't like cop shows. I don't watch any police shows. I tell everybody, you know, I live the life. I worked in police work for 27 years and I have had enough. So like I said, this to me isn't a cop show really. Dog the Bounty Hunter is not. <laughs> I mean, why does this guy wear a shirt? I'm, I'm confused. He's in Hawaii. It's hot. He's wearing this big jacket. He's all sweaty, you can see. And he doesn't, never has a shirt on. It's like he just wears this unbuttoned jacket. Why doesn't he? I don't understand why he doesn't wear a shirt. But anyway, <laughs> I guess it's his trademark. <laughs> so it's a... A little corny like I say but I like it and like I said I follow Beth so I I um I think the very last one might be a little hard for me to watch but we'll see so other than that this week like I said I haven't gotten some stitching done which makes me really happy and I'll show you um some whips that I, not a lot of whips but just a few things that I've been working on so um questions. I had a couple questions on my last um, video. Someone asked, it was, um, uh, let's see, what was the question? Where does my neighbor store all of his Halloween decorations? Great question. Now he has a big backyard. His dad was a fireman. So he not only has this big retired fire engine in his backyard, but he also has a lot of room where he can store the, like the big horse-drawn carriage. If you guys watched last video, it was on the Halloween. It showed pictures of the house and our front yards. He has the big horse-drawn carriage and um, skeletons everywhere. That is only a portion of what he has. Like I said, the main part of his front yard was his maze that he had set up all of that goes into his garage. He parks all his cars outside in his driveway, but inside the garage, there's space. Actually, there's no space. Once he puts Halloween back in, there's no space. But his backyard, he pu he pulls the carriage into the backyard, covers it so it's safe for um, you know the whole year. And then um, I've got these kitties. I, you can see the door open. They they want to come and go. Otherwise, they scratch at the front at the door and want to come in. So. Anyway, but he puts everything in his backyard, covers it up, and so the majority of his year is with stuff all over his backyard, Halloween decorations that are covered. Uh, let's see. Someone asked, what color white do I use? It was Kim. She asked, uh, I use, my favorite white is DMC B5200 because I like the brighter white. And again, when I display pieces, like some of the pieces I have year round, I like them up. I mean, I stitched it. It might be Halloween. It might be Christmas and they might be side by side with each other, but that's okay with me because I like looking at them year round in my office. So, um, I like the white because if it does become dingy, it, to me, it seems like it takes a little bit longer because it is a brighter white and I like how it stands out on the patterns. Um, there was a pattern that I did a couple months back where I wish I had shown, I wish I had used a duller white. So it just depends on your chart. Um, the last one that I did was the, um, oh gosh, it was a finish I just had where I, oh, um, Hello Fall by Plum Street Samplers. He, there are uh, two white pumpkins. I wanted those to be bright with the fall colors. Um, it's on my Instagram if you want to go check it out, but I did use the B5200 and I don't think it's too bright at all. Um, my Instagram is 911 stitcher all spelled out. So if you want to take a look and see what you think about that color white, again, it just depends on what you're stitching and what, how, you know, sometimes you might want a little bit, not, you don't want such a shocking white or bright white. You can use something different right now. I'm using, um, uh, let's see. I think it's Linen by Weeks Dye Works maybe for Scary Berry, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And I think that's better because the fabric is so dark that I didn't want just like this huge, bright, glaring white. So I am using the Linen Color White. I believe it's called by, 
I think it's um, weeks that I work. So, um, so that was the next question. And the last question, um, oh no, this wasn't a question. This was a comment that was brilliant. Another Kim had made a comment about me running out of floss for the toe, uh, for the shoe on Field Mouse Hollow, which I'm gonna show you because that's my finish. So she had such a brilliant idea. She says, if you if the floss doesn't match when you get it and it's off color, use a gray and you can make yourself a steel toe boot. So you would have your shoe and then you've got the gray toe. So it would be like a steel toe too. And I thought that was so amazingly, what a great, so brilliant. What a great idea because I probably would have used the off colored floss and then thought, oh, well, we've got two different colors here and just dealt with it. And I'd never thought about a steel toed shoe. How brilliant is that? So thank you, Kim. But as it turned out, Jen from Sten, uh, Jen's Stitching Niche found the exact like um, barcode numbers from her stash and she sent me the correct color. So it did come out. It's the perfect, it came out pretty good. So <clears throat> let's start with um, more news and new releases, things that caught my eye. As far as news, you guys have probably already seen that Prairie Moon design is back. Th those charts have been selling for a fortune on eBay, especially the one I'm looking for, which is a Halloween chart. And um, so I've been keeping my eye on eBay because I really wanted it. And I'm just like, I'm not paying that. It's like, it was like a hundred dollars or something crazy. Like maybe not that high, but like something crazy that I wouldn't pay. So anyway, an email or um, uh, something came out. I can't remember where I saw it. Oh, my friend Mona showed me. She said, guess what? Prairie Moons are back. So I went onto their website, which is prairiemoonneedlework.com. And sure enough, there's a big message that said, we are back, which is so cool. So I'm all excited. I posted it on my Instagram. Hey, Prairie Moon's back. Yay, this is great. Until I saw the prices. And if you guys have gone to prairiemoonneedleworks.com and seen the prices of these charts, I don't mind paying for it if I'm going to get a copy. I like printed copies. I um, Even on a PDF, I print it myself. And I like that. I like having that printed chart. So I went on the website and what I was floored because I started getting comments on Instagram. I had not had a chance to really look at the prices and people were talking about how expensive I'm not paying that, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, I got to check this out. So I went on the website and I looked and I'm just like, whoa, the chart I want was like almost $40. It was like either, I can't remember if it was 38 or $36 for the Halloween Prairie Moon chart. And I'm like, for PDF, my husband just uh, refilled the ink printers. We have two printers. He just refilled our printer and it cost us almost $100 in ink. So I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna pay $38 for this chart that I'm gonna print out and use our ink. And I'm just like, I think I'm gonna wait. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. The other thing I was really surprised is that it's not available in stores. And I don't know if they're going to be because I saw another comment that said, yeah, they're only available um, on their website. They're not releasing them to stores, which maybe that'll change, I don't know. So if you are interested in Prairie Moon, they're available, but you're gonna pay for it and it's PDF only right now. So check it out. I mean, they have some really cute charts. I'll, I'll say that much. I, I super cute. I actually saw some more that I wanted to get to. So right now I'm waiting. I'm just going to hold off and not, I'm not going to pay that right now. So let's do new releases. There were a buttload, boat, boatload, buttload, <laughs> boatload of new releases and I can't keep up with them. So I'm going to show some uh, designers that I have not mentioned in the past. There's a cat fight going on in my hallway. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard the hissing, but if you see something right around in here, keep an eye out because you might see fur flying. <laughs> anyway, back to my video. So new releases and things that caught my eye. Uh, I love something I have not shown on my videos is heaven and earth designs. Now I love full coverage. I have probably at least six or seven, no, maybe more than that, seven or eight full coverage that I have started, which I'll show another time. 
but I love heaven and earth designs. I love charting creations, but they are full coverage. I stitch them over one. I like 20 count. And again, I'll show you another day, but um, I am going to show you two. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the designer, Ciro Marchetti. <gasps> Oh my gosh, his designs are my favorite. And her, his and um, Amy Stewart is another one. She is with Heaven and Earth Designs, one of their designers, and she's just got some amazing charts. So here are uh, Cyril Marchetti's, both of his new um, releases. So I'll show you now. This is Jungle Montage. Look at the colors on that, it's so beautiful. So one thing I love about Amy Stewart and uh, Cyril Marchetti is that they use such beautiful, bright colors. Full coverage isn't for everybody I know, but I love it. And maybe there are some other ones out there that wanted to see these. But Heaven and Earth had a lot of releases this week. I just couldn't, I, this video would be an hour and a half. So these are some that caught my eye. The next one by Cyril Marchetti uh, is Atrium. Another really colorful, beautiful chart. And here goes some more um, new releases that I thought were fantastic by Lindy Stitches. Now this is cool. This, I love different. Who was it? Oh, it was Kindred Stitcher that's stitching on a uh, whip of hers that has a pelican in it. It's like a Christmas pelican. It's fantastic because I love different. I love, I mentioned before, I love birds and I'm gonna find that pelican. I'm gonna to have to ask her. I can't remember who it was by, but it was a Christmas pelican. And so here is a really interesting, new, neat design that is different. Uh, it's called Merry Manatees. So if anybody's into manatees, this is the cutest drum I've seen. Uh, here's that picture. And then if I can get the picture, I don't think I saved it, so I don't know if I'm gonna insert it, but check out Lindy Stitches. She has one that's two swans that are in a stocking, and I think they were called stocking stuffers. Super, super cute. But uh, like I said, if I don't insert that picture, check it out on either, um, I think I've seen her on Instagram, and I don't know if she has a website, but Lindy Stitches, I, and I think she might be on Etsy, cutest swan uh, in the stockings. But those manatees, who would thought, who would have thought that they would do a design on them and they're fantastic. And I'm into drums right now, even though I haven't stitched one. I think they're so, so cute. Here's another one by Abby Rose. I don't think this is new. I It's just something that caught my eye because I think it's so pretty. It's called Yuletide on Thistle Hill. How beautiful is that? I love that. And then the next two I wanted to tell you about were by Jeanette Douglas. She had some new releases this week. Uh, Blooming Bouquets. Gorgeous. Oh my God, that, that be those beautiful colors. And the second one is called Christmas Box. Again, those colors, just wow. I love Jeanette Douglas. I've never done a box like that before where you put the different pictures in the boxes. I know people have said that the boxes are available at Hobby Lobby. So um, I wanna say that Priscilla Blaine did one. I saw, I thought I saw one on her blog where she did a box and it was really, really pretty. So um, check out the Jeanette Douglas one. Another thing, I didn't get a picture of it because I wasn't sure if I could, I usually what I'll do is I'll type to, I'll send an email to the designer or I'll put a comment and ask, hey, is it okay for me to use your pictures? And I wasn't sure if I could use these, but if you get a chance, check out Hands Across the Sea Sampler. Um, she posted a sneak peek at the new one coming out really soon. It, you can also see it if you're on Facebook and you subscribe to Linen and Things. These pictures and the colors are fantastic. Um, but anyway, that's Hands Across the Sea Sampler. So I, I wish I could post that picture, but I didn't want to use their picture without asking them. So, okay, let's do giveaway winners for mystery chart. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. I had a lot of people, some people got it and some didn't. So I usually what I'll do, but I, and I should have explained this beforehand. If you don't hear from me for the first few days after the video, you and you sent me an email, chances are you got it right. I will reply to everyone. If I missed you for some reason and you did not get an email from me, more than likely you got the answer right. 
So the ones that did not guess right, I will always write you back right away and let you know so that way you can try again and you have lots of time to go searching for mystery chart. And I have to apologize because I was supposed to put a second clue on my Instagram and it just completely forgot. This week has been crazy. So um, I apologize for not putting that second clue on my Instagram. So um, the people that didn't get it right, a lot of you guys wrote me back, which I told you guys, absolutely, write me back a second time, it's not a bother, with another guess. So anyway, uh, you guys did awesome on your guessing. And like I said, there was a lot that didn't get it right, and then, but got the designer right. So I had to laugh because I had a comment on my last video because I could not remember the word. I posted a picture of Barbara Anna Designs logo, just a piece of it, because I wasn't gonna just show you the whole thing, just a piece of it to see if you'd recognize the lettering. And I struggled because there was a word I couldn't remember and someone wrote, I think they remember I think the word you're looking for is font. Font! That's the word. <laughs> so why I couldn't think of the word font just made me laugh. So thank you for suggesting that that is the word that I struggled with on my last video. It was font. So a lot of you did recognize the font and you knew it was Barbara Anna Designs, but I had a lot of guesses on Let It Snow, I think it was by Barbara Anna. And I had another guess from a different Barbara Anna chart. So it was just really fun because I, 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 again, the same thing happened. I got an email from someone that said, okay, well, I didn't get it right, but I just discovered another chart that I'm buying. And I love this so much and love mystery chart. Everybody wrote how much they loved it. So anyway, the mystery chart from last week was Barbara Anna Designs and it was Autumn Tree. So there's the little girl I posted. I think I had a fox and a tree. And um, then of course there's the famous logo. So thank you everybody for entering mystery chart. And uh, um, I'm gonna announce the winner of who won this chart. Uh, when I, I forgot to tell you guys last week, when I choose uh, winners, usually I'll use the random Google selector Sometimes I'll tell my husband, you know, okay, I've got 30 giveaway entries. Pick a number between one and 30 and he'll just come up with a number and then that person will win. This time I used the random Google selector again. Actually, it wasn't ran, it wasn't Google. It was another, I like to switch it up because I always think, okay, what if random Google is like just giving out the same numbers? Sometimes it, it there's been a couple times where I think, is this thing always picking number 17 or is it always picking number, you know, 28 or whatever? So um, I'd like to change it up. So I found another selector online and I put the numbers in of how many entries and then I got the number. So the winner of the Barbara Anna Designs Autumn Tree chart goes to Nicole Hagen, H-A-U-G-E-N. Nicole, congratulations, you won mystery chart. I hope you don't have it. If you happen to already have this chart, let me know because I do have fabric to give away. I have different counts. I've got, I know people don't always stitch the same, of course. So I've got some 16 count, 18 count, 28 count, 32 count. So we'll um, send me an email. My email is stacer5, it's S-T-A-C-E-R number five at AOL.com. Nicole Hagen, you won. Congratulations on getting mystery chart. Okay, guys. So let's see if I have any more uh, new releases. Nope, that's all on new releases. The giveaway winners. Yay, from the last video, I had five of them. Let's go ahead and start with those. And giveaway winner for... Oh, I have mystery chart ready for this video. It's cute. So, oh, how did I wrinkle a page on the magazine? Oh, anyway. Okay, so giveaway number one was Cross Stitcher Magazine, August 2019. I did have a giveaway for this a couple months, about a month or two ago, and I did not hear from the winner, so we're gonna have to move on. 
Um, so the giveaway winner for the Cross Stitcher magazine, this one comes with the insert I told you about, real cute hot air balloon chart. So Mr. I mean, um, giveaway winner for Cross Stitcher magazine is Laura Watts. Congratulations, Laura. Email me and give me your address. I'll get it out to you this week. Giveaway number two was courtesy of my uh, viewer, Audrey, that sent us all some giveaway stuff. So thanks to her, we've got one, two, three winners. And um, number two was the Lizzie Kate Flip It January. Giveaway number two goes to Claudine Heffel. Congratulations, Claudine. You won this one. I'll get it out to you this week if you email me. Giveaway number three was by Country Cottage Needleworks. It is Main Street Dress Shop. This is so cute. Giveaway number three goes to the winner is Kayla Cola, K-O-L-L-A. So Kayla, congratulations. Email me and I'll get it out to you. Giveaway number four, Country Cottage Needleworks, Main Street Gazebo. Now this, oh my gosh, this is one of my favorites. Look at how beautiful that is, that white gazebo. Oh man, love it. So giveaway number four for the gazebo goes to Allison Corbin. Congratulations, Allison. Email me. <laughs> number five was, and I found out the name of the company. It is the 28 count Cashel Sapphire Green. You can kind of get an idea. It's like a light minty green. It's really pretty. And I couldn't remember, it's 13 by 18 inches, and I couldn't remember what company it was, and it hit me after the video last week. It is um, Color and Cotton. So the winner, giveaway number five for the Color and Cotton Sapphire Green, Anja Hartman Wecking, W-E-K-K-I-N-G. Anja, congratulations. Get a hold of me, stacer5 at AOL.com. You guys won, you won, Anja. Congratulations, you guys. I'm so excited for you. I'm uh, get those out to you this week. And we have giveaways, of course, for this video coming up at the end. And um, we, let's see what, oh, let me show you my finishes <clears throat> and a couple whips I've been working on. So finish, I have, let's see if I can put something behind it for, so we can, uh, you guys can see it a little bit better. We have a finish on Field Mouse Hollow by Brenda Gervais. Look at those shoelaces. Aren't those the cutest things? This was a stitch along with Jen's Stitching Niche. It started October 1st and I just posted yesterday my finish and um, posted on her stitch along Instagram page that I, I'm done. So thank you, Jen, for the stitch along. This came out really, really cute. And um, I did change the fabric on the chart. It was a tan color and I decided to try it on the blue. It's 28 count Lugana, but I don't remember exactly the color or where I got it, but it is um, the Cashel and it is like an antique blue if I remember right. So that's my finish for the week. Very, very cute and fun stitch. I really enjoyed that one. Next up is my famous punch needle whip that I've been, work <laughs> that I've been working on. I am now almost done and I'm filling in the background. So I sent an email to my uh, instructor that I had at Galleria, the punch needle um, instructor, and I asked her what she thought about me leaving the spaces to make my lines. I mentioned it in the last video how messed up the whiskers were. I am gonna take those out and try and redo them. And I asked her what she thought about me, I'll show you the back, leaving a little bit of a space between the colors. So you'll see the light color orange for the stripes of the pumpkin up against the dark color orange. And you'll see I left a tiny little space. She said that's totally fine. She said that would give the color room to expand a little bit, which I think it did. That is not what I did for the whiskers, and that's why the whiskers are all bunched up and messy. So I think the pumpkin came out a lot cleaner. She said it's totally fine to leave those lines between 
colors so long as you don't have any bald patches. So I think I did pretty good because even when I move it, you don't see, there's no bald patches. It filled in really, really nice. So anyway, the whip for this week on this is that I'm filling in the background. And once I fill in the background, I'm, I'll be totally done. And I can't wait to finish it into something really cute. It's been a really fun thing to work on. And once that's done, I'll start another uh, punch needle piece. And the next, the last whip I had this week was Scary Berry by Erica Michaels. I'm doing this on Haunted, which is a little bit darker of a fabric. It is 28 count Haunted by Picture This Plus. And let me move my needle out of the way. This is my progress on that. You can see the little, I think that's a little kitty cat. And I'm starting on the ghost for um, that. Isn't that fabric fantastic? So I did order some more haunted fabric. Um, and I think this just it's just the most beautiful fabric it's perfect for this um for the scary berry scene so you'll see it's a little bit different it's a little bit darker than what the called for fabric was the fabric they used was storm from picture this plus so this is uh, haunted from picture this plus the, all the supplies and the fabric came from shepherd's needle in little little rock arkansas so those are my whips for the week Oh, and before I forget, I wanted to ask you guys. So I'm having trouble with the rings that I think I just got them on Amazon maybe. I wanted to see if you guys had some ideas of what or if you use something different to hold your floss colors. I use these rings and I have had a heck of a time with this part, the screw, it keeps breaking on me. So it's not like I had my husband look at look at it last week and the screw for some reason can't go back in and it's kind of you know how like it turns what's it called like kind of corroded in a way like it turns a little bit co coppery color um rust seriously what's with me and my words rust <laughs> that was one of them but I have now broken like three of these. So if anybody has other ideas of what they use instead of these rings, let me know. Or maybe who makes these rings that might be a little bit stronger that I should look into. Anyway, I was looking for some ideas. Let's see, what else do we have? How about giveaway? Oh no, let me show you a little bit of haul. I have a stack, it's ridiculous. Um, just a few bags that I got. I wanted to show you they are so so cute the first bag I got is smaller than your typical bag because I wanted something to hold um, scissors and stuff that I could maybe take with me on trips instead of having to have just my one bag uh, diddly daddle designs which is one of my favorite bag companies on Etsy she made this bag that's the back actually here's the front it is so cute and you can see now this is the regular size bag I'll show you this one in a minute but you can see it I, I don't remember what the measurements were but you can see it's a little bit smaller so I just wanted something for floss or for scissors and all my supplies that I travel with so I got that cute little bag I love that uh, checked um, mousse he's cute and this fabric is it's just perfect. So I got that bag. Oh, and I meant to say that, hold on. On Etsy, Diddly, let's see. Diddly is D-I-D-D-L-Y and then Daddle, D-A-D-D-L-E designs. I'll link her name on the bottom in the notes, in the notes area. Another company I love who makes the vinyl bags is called Quilting Grimalkin. And I absolutely love these bags that she made. This is my B one. It is uh, 13 by 11, maybe. I can't remember if um, that's the size. I'm pretty sure that's the size. But that's the front, that's the back. And this is the cute little B. Yee, if I can get him to stop moving. 
the cute little bee that she had oh there he is i didn't even know he had color i've only seen the back of him isn't he cute love quilting grimalkin oh here's her name that way you guys can see the name if it hopefully it shows but she's on etsy i love these bags perfect size for a whip the second bag I got from Quilting Grimalkin is this Halloween bag with the skull, 13 by 11, I believe. Perfect, perfect size. And then here's the back. Look at that back. Those colors and the bat and the spider. Oh my gosh. I love it. So cute. Um, Here's, gosh. You know, maybe I will wait again a second week to show you haul. <laughs> it's I have so much haul and so much to always tell you guys. I'll show you a few things. So I went to my local needle workshop, which, like I said, they don't have a huge amount, like a shepherd's um, needle or like a um, stitch bill or anything like that. It's a sm really small. Um, they don't always have a lot of um, releases that are new. So but they have floss and so I, I stopped in. I was on my way back from Los Angeles from seeing my doctor. So I thought I'm gonna treat myself to a trip to the LNS. It's called, um, oh, how come I can't think of the name? I can see it. Anyway, it's in Upland, California. Oh, Needles and Niceties, that's what it's called. So I stopped in and I got a couple little cute things. This is by Just Nan, Frosty Snow Cube. Frosty Snow Cube. Isn't he cute? Look at that mouse. And it comes with real sparkly beads, which I'll try and show you in the back. But he's really cute. So I got him. Here's the sparkly beads. You can kind of see them. Super, super cute. Then I got, they had 50% off of their punch needle. So I grabbed some that were so, it was like $7 or $8. Lizzie Kate, who I didn't know she had punch needle. This is, how cool was that? So here's Lizzie Kate's uh, Halloween hangups. I love that candy corn and the bat and the, I just love them all. So that'll be cute for my Halloween tree, which I'll put up next year. Right now the Halloween tree, oh, so, <laughs> so, Tuesday was the one year of anniversary of my dad passing. And so Monday, I got a lot of messages, you know, gosh, I'll be thinking about you. I'm thinking about your dad. Um, it's been a hard, like I said before, it's been a really hard year for me because my dad was my best friend. And so I mon on Monday, I told my husband, I said, let's decorate for Christmas. You know what? Let's get our tree. Let's make the mantle really pretty with lights and colors. And so I told my husband, I said, I need something so that... And to tell you the truth, Tuesday really wasn't any different than how I feel every day. I, I miss my dad and, and I feel sadness every day. And so the one year anniversary, it was just like every day to me, really. You know, I talked to my brother who, other than my husband, is one of the most important people in my life and my mom, of course. And um, even though my mom and dad were divorced, they were best friends. And so is my mom and my stepdad with my dad. My dad and my stepdad became really good friends. The three of them, they got Christmas gifts for each other every year. It was just so awesome. My, like I said, my dad was amazing. He was so thoughtful. And um, so my mom, they went to high school. Well, they were, my, she's known him since she was like 16 years old. So to her, it was really, really hard. But how cool was that to have step parents and parents that are best friends? And so anyway, so I told my husband, we need to do something so that I'm not sad tomorrow because, and like I said, I, I, I am sad every day. Sometimes I think about him. So I got through Tuesday. I did good. I did really good. So we decorated for Christmas and we've got our Christmas tree up. We've got the mantle lights up. I have my mini tree decorated for Christmas and it makes me happy. So I'll show that in December. <laughs> anyway, Lizzie Kate, punch needle. That's some haul. Another one I got was by Charlotte Dundee. It is Christmas night. Another punch needle. How cute is he? I love how he's waving. <laughs> and the last punch needle was Chezzy and Me. That's another one I didn't know did punch needle. Um, it is 
Summer Hive. Very cute. Cross stitch, I got Lizzie Kate. It's a kit. It is Noel. It comes with a needle nanny and it comes with the fabric in the back. It was also discounted and it comes with a little charm, which I can't really tell. Oh, it's a heart. But here's the kit, Lizzie Kate kit that I got. How cute is that? But I love these kits, how they come with um, all kinds of different fabric and finishing um, things to finish it up. So I got that. Okay, let's do giveaway. Time's getting up to about 40 minutes. So let's do some giveaways. Giveaway number one this week is going to be another cross stitcher magazine, which I got just a few days ago. I just, I don't think I'm going to renew my subscription because I, I don't like a lot of backstitching and I've noticed that the magazine doesn't always have a lot of backstitching, but sometimes it does. So I don't know if I'll, um, renew it, but it's a great magazine and I'd like to give it to one of you guys. It does have the insert. This is the insert this year. I mean, for this month, really, really cute. So this is going to be giveaway number one. It is brand new cross stitcher magazine. It is December of 2019. So if you would like to be entered to win this giveaway for the next video, um, your question, I have questions. And again, I am going to go back to cross stitching questions, but I absolutely love the person, like the questions about you. I, I'm enjoying learning about all of you and what, you know, different things that you like. And um, I just, it's just different and I like it. So the question this week, dun, 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 giveaway number one, question for comments. Now again, mystery chart, which I'm gonna show at the very end because mystery chart is back again. Mystery chart, if you think you know it, that's gonna be in the email. You're gonna email me with what you think it is and you'll be entered to win that mystery chart. So giveaways like this, one, two, and three, I have three today, those will be put in the comments below. Um, and your, your typical stuff. You have to be 18 and don't say the word giveaway and all that. So question this week, name something unique that you carry in your purse or your bag. If you don't carry a purse, because I did I did get some, um, some male um, stitchers that have started following me. So welcome you guys, it's awesome having you. Name something that you would carry maybe like in your car or something in your wallet that you keep. You know, I mean, I'm not asking for personal stuff, but like it's just something unique that you like to carry around. Um, something unique in my bag. Let me think. I should have thought of this ahead of time before. <laughs> I might answer it next video because I'm, I'm trying to think. I always, always carry spare contact lenses because... As you can tell, I blink probably a lot because they get dry, but I um, carry con extra contact lenses and cleaner, I mean like solution, but something unique that I carry, I always carry a picture of my shepherds. I have a, a picture of my shepherds in my wallet. I'll think of more, but your question is, what is something unique that you carry in your purse or your bag or that you might carry along in your car it doesn't matter. Anything you might carry along. So giveaway number one is going into comment section. If you're interested in the magazine, just let me know and answer the question. Number two, I am going to pass along my Field Mouse Hollow chart. Since I'm all done with it, there are no marks on it. Um, if someone would like to stitch Field Mouse Hollow, this is giveaway number two. And last but not least, we have giveaway number three which is going to be floss all in purple. I have Weeks Dye Works. Two of the purples are in Weeks Dye Works. I have Plum, Mulberry, and then I have Crescent Colors, Hand Dyed Floss, Five Yards, Purple, Aster. So today is all about purple. If you're interested in winning these three colors, this is giveaway number three. Yeah, one was a magazine, two field mouse hollow. This is number three. 
So if you're interested in these really pretty purpley colors, enter for giveaway number three. Okay, so last but not least, we have Mystery Chart. So again, Mystery Chart has been, a lot of people have really enjoyed Mystery Chart and it makes me so happy. So this is gonna be through email. I'm gonna show you a picture. I will post, a, I will do this this week and I apologize again for not releasing the second clue, but clue number one is a picture. This is how Mystery Chart works is that I'm gonna show you a picture. It might be jumbled. This time I don't think it's, it might be jumbled, but sometimes I show picture of the designer's font um, either way, the object is to guess which chart it is. If you guess right, you're entered to win the chart. Now, what if you already have the chart? That's okay, I have backup fabric. So if you would like to be entered, you're gonna send me an email after you see the picture, tell me what you think the name of the chart and the designer is, and you're entered to win. Again, I will um, email you back right away if it's not right, and just guess again, keep guessing, it's okay. So, are you guys ready? Mystery chart is here. So tell me if you think you know the name and the designer. And let me know, Stacer, S-T-A-C-E-R number five at AOL.com. So that is about all I have for this video. Next week I'll show more haul that I got throughout the week. In fact, I just got the mail today and I haven't opened it yet. I ordered from Teresa Coquit's store. I got a different punch needle that I wanted to try and I'm one of her charts. And I also got, I've got more haul to show you that is gonna last probably a couple videos. So <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks again for watching video number 12. And you, oh, before I forget also for giveaways and for mystery chart, you have one week from it's actually uh, closes Friday night at midnight Pacific time. So um, you have all week to look around and see if you can find mystery chart if you know it. And the giveaways you're more than welcome to enter. And again, Friday night, which would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 15th, 14th at midnight. Friday night is when it closes So because I do my videos on Saturdays. Anyway, congr uh, congratulations to all the winners that won on the giveaway last video. I will mail, um, mail those out this week. Just email me. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Instagram is 911stitcher, all spelled out. And um, if you liked the video, it would be really great if you can give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And subscribe so you know when the next video is. And um, before I forget, I keep forgetting to say hello to my friend Jean, who hopefully is watching. I think she watches every week, which makes me really happy. So Jean, mwah, how's that? <laughs> Love you. So, okay. Uh, oh, and before I forget, Jean and I are getting ready to leave for the Netherlands. I should have said that in news, but we leave December 1st. There'll be a few more floss tube videos before then. And, um, but we are getting ready to leave. Uh, we'll be joining in the Netherlands. We'll meet up with Pam and Steph from uh, Just Keep Stitching. There's also another floss tuber. Her name is Debbie. She is creatively yours on floss tube. She's wonderful. I've gotten to chat with her. She's really fun. I can't wait to meet her. And um, all the ones that are coming from the US and England, and I think somebody is coming from Italy maybe. I can't wait to meet you guys. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll tell you more about it later. In the meantime, happy stitching, everybody, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.